two great white sharks were swimming side by side. The elder, a seasoned hunter in wise father, was teaching his young son the art of hunting prey. They had been swimming together for miles, searching for the next meal, when suddenly they spotted the survivors of a sunken ship clinging to debris and floating in the water. The father shark, sensing a perfect opportunity to teach his son a valuable lesson, said with a grin, Follow me, my boy. I will show you the true art of hunting humans. With great excitement, the son followed his father as they swam towards the group of survivors. As they near their prey, the father shark advised, First, we swim around them a few times with just the tip of our fins showing. This will make them nervous and heighten their fear. Taking his father's guidance to heart, the young shark followed suit and together they circled the terrified humans, barely revealing their fins above the water's surface. The survivors panicked crew with each circle, their eyes widening in terror. Satisfied with their initial display, the father shark proudly said, Well done, son. Now we swim around them a few more times with all of our fins showing. This will increase their fear even more. Eager to learn, the sun shark obeyed, and the pair swam around the humans again, this time with all their fins clearly visible. The survivors began to scream and thrash about in the water, making desperate attempts to stay afloat. Once their prey was thoroughly frightened, the father shark finally said, Now, my boy, it's time to feast. We eat everybody. And so they did. The two sharks gorged themselves on the helpless humans, enjoying every last bite. When they had finished their meal and were both full, the sun shark, with a puzzled look on his face, asked his father, Dad, I enjoyed the hunt, but I have to ask, why did we swim around and around them? Why didn't we just eat them right away? The father shark, now grinning even wider, replied, my dear son, it's all about the taste. You see, humans taste much better. If you scare the shit out of them first. <laughs> On chilly winter day, a drunk man decided it would be a fantastic idea to try his hand at ice fishing. With liquid courage fueling his enthusiasm, he gathered his fishing gear and stumbled his way to the nearest frozen body of water. Upon arriving, he found what he thought to be the perfect spot. He set up his folding chair, unpacked his fishing gear, and began drilling a hole into the ice with his trusty auger. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a thunderous voice boomed. There are no fish there. The man, startled in a bit disoriented, looked around but saw no one. Thinking perhaps it was just his imagination, he decided to move to another spot on the ice. Once again, he set up his chair and started drilling a new hole with his auger. However, just as before, the deep voice resounded, there are no fish there. Now more bewildered than before, the man figured it best to try his luck elsewhere on the ice. He moved to a third location, hoping to finally find success. He began drilling yet another hole. But once more, the booming voice echoed across the ice. There are no fish there, it declared. The man, now shaking and questioning his sanity, looked up to the heavens and called out, God, is that you? The voice replied, this time with a hint of frustration. No, it's not God. I'm the ice rink manager. Now get out of here, you drunk fool! <laughs> Mr. Smith goes to the doctor's office to collect his wife's test results. The nurse says to him, I'm sorry, sir, but there has been a bit of a mix-up, and we have a problem. When we sent the samples from your wife to the lab, the samples from another Mrs. Smith were sent as well, and we are now uncertain which one is your wife's. Frankly, it is either bad or terrible. What do you mean? said Mr. Smith. Well, one Mrs. Smith has tested positive for Alzheimer's and the other, 
Mrs. Smith has tested positive for AIDS. We can't tell which is your wife. That's terrible, said Mr. Smith. Can we do the test over? Normally, yes. But with British Columbia Healthcare, they won't pay for these expensive tests more than once. Well, what am I supposed to do now? said Mr. Smith. BC Health recommends that you drop your wife off in the middle of town. If she finds her way home, don't sleep with her. <laughs> As a hard-working man was leaving his office, he began to cross the road, eager to return home to his loving wife after a long day of work. Unfortunately, just as he was in the middle of the street, he was struck by a speeding car. With a flurry of sirens and flashing lights, he was quickly transported to the hospital, where he was admitted with severe injuries. As the medical staff rushed him into the emergency room, they began performing a series of tests and x-rays to assess the extent of the damage. In the midst of the chaos, the man managed to send a series of text messages to his wife, informing her of the accident and his current condition. Sweetheart, I was hit by a car just outside the office. It's pretty bad. Tina was nearby, and she brought me to the hospital. The doctors are running tests and taking x-rays to see how bad it is. I took a heavy blow to the head, and they're worried it might be quite serious. Along with that, I have three broken ribs, a fractured arm, a compound fracture in my left leg, and they're considering amputating my right foot. His wife, upon receiving these messages, was filled with worry and concern for her husband's well-being. Her heart raised as she imagined the pain and suffering he must be experiencing. Frantically, she typed out her reply and hit send. Wait a minute, who is Tina? The maternity class is bustling with pregnant women and their supportive husbands, all eager to learn and prepare for their upcoming life change. The instructor and experienced professional begins by emphasizing the importance of exercise during pregnancy. Ladies, it's crucial to remember that staying active is beneficial for both you and your baby. She goes on to explain, walking in particular, is a fantastic choice. It not only strengthens the pelvic muscles, but also makes the delivery process much smoother. Just be mindful of your pace, take frequent breaks, and opt for a soft surface, like a grassy path, for added comfort. The instructor then addresses the men in the room, saying, Gentlemen, let's not forget that you're partners in this journey. Accompanying your wives on these walks would be a thoughtful gesture. In fact, sharing this experience will only serve to strengthen your bond as a couple. The room falls into a contemplate of silence as the men digest the information. After a few moments of reflection, a man seated at the back of the room tentatively raises his hand. The instructor responds, Yes, what's your question? The man, a hesitant look on his face, poses his query. I was just wondering, would it be all right if she carries a golf bag whilst we walk? <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. This is important. It will help me continue my work.